Welcome back to the Online Sale Coach YouTube channel. This week we're going to be discussing Sale GP and the lockdown in Bermuda. Many of the top sailors from the America's Cup are going to be transferring boats to compete in the Sale GP event happening in a week's time. Ben Ainsley will be racing the British boat. America's Cup commentator and Australian Nate Outridge will be helming the Japanese boat. Pete Burling will be helming the New Zealand boat and Jimmy Spittle will be in the US boat. So I'm not sure if I've ever seen a more competitive sailing event. If you're missing the America's Cup, Sail GP is the next best thing. However, a few days ago, the event going ahead was thrown into doubt, with the venue Bermuda going into lockdown. But before we get into the sailing news, I need your help. If you watched the last few videos on this channel, you'll know I've been trying to rename this channel. Two weeks ago, I came up with a list of 20 potential names and you've kindly helped me narrow it down to the final three. But I still need your help to pick the best one. So here are the final three names. First up, we have The Racing Sailor. This was quite a popular name with you guys, but I don't have any clever logo ideas for it. So if you've got any suggestions um, for logo ideas, that would be awesome. The second name we have is Sail Race Win. I like this name because it sums up what the channel's about. It clearly says we're about sailing, but not just sailing, we're about racing. And the win part suggests that we're about helping sailors improve. We have the YouTube channel, but we also have an online course helping small boat racers get better. And if that sounds of interest to you, you can find a link to that in the description below. Last up, we have Fast Forward Sailing. The only problem with this is it's a bit long, but um, it's got lots going for it. It was the first boat I raced. It's probably the most unique name of the lot. The fast forward element implies racing, but it also winks to the fact that we're making videos with the fast forward bit. Also, it lends itself to having a good logo. Rather than having the traditional fast forward symbol, we can adjust it slightly so it looks like two sails. So there are the top three. If you can let me know which one you like the best, that would be much appreciated. So, on to the news. This week, we've had reports that Bermuda is going back into lockdown and there's worries that that might affect Sail GP going ahead. We've only got just over a week until Sail GP, but on the 12th of April, Bermuda's Premier David Burt announced that Bermuda will return to a shelter at home policy from 5am on April 13th. So the worry wasn't that this lockdown was going to directly cancel the event, but it was going to stop the necessary preparation which would allow the event to go ahead. So David Burt said that all businesses apart from grocery stores, pharmacies and gas stations would be closed while household mixing is prohibited by law. On April 14th this article came out saying that the lockdown starting Tuesday morning in Bermuda has caught out the teams assembling and training ahead of the start of the first regatta in the second round of Sail GP. Sail GP CEO Russell Coots confirmed that the racing facilities on Cross Island in the Royal Dockyard is now off limits. The F-50, which is the class of boat used in Sail GP, is intended to be used by the America's Cup champion sailors in the new New Zealand Sail GP team, but that has been sent to Bermuda unfinished due to the uncertain situation with shipping schedules. And that was in the expectation that the bill could be finished by the Sail GP support team in the racing facility on Cross Island. However, the problem is, Coot said, is that if we lock our staff down for a week or even a few days, we're almost certainly not going to get that boat finished in time for racing in the event, which would obviously not be the desired position. But it wouldn't have just been the New Zealand team that would have been affected. As the F-50s have changed substantially since the last regatta, there's need to have proper sea trials before they can be cleared for racing. Here's an interview with Russell Coots explaining the situation. Obviously, right now we've we've been locked down, and I'm talking to the government about allowing uh, our people dispensation because uh, a lot of people don't really realise the complexity of these F50 boats this year. They've got new systems on them, new electronics, new new hydraulic systems. The analogy would be like asking a Formula One driver to jump in a car <laughs> that's totally untested and race it against all the other cars on, on a Formula One track, you know. All visitors involved in Sail GP have been subject to strict coronavirus safety protocols. After completing the required negative pre-tests, arrival tests and initial quarantine, additional restrictions come into play. Each team remains in their own bubbles in their own camp. 
are there any concerns that Bermuda's current situation with the pandemic could lead to a delay or cancellation of this race? As I said, if we can't get the sailing teams on the water, um, it, it is time critical. In theory, we would soon reach a point where if we can't operate, we'd have to cancel the event. But I doubt, I don't think that's going to be the situation. I think we um, will find a solution with the Bermudian government. Right, so a couple of days later on April 15th, the green light was given for sale GP in Bermuda. It reads, they have been granted approval today to continue operations despite the Bermuda government having issued a stay-at-home order. Sale GP have been working with the Bermuda Tourism Authority to allow this dispensation to allow the event to go ahead. The essential operations and on-water safety trials can take place for the eight international teams. So Russell Coote said, We are really pleased that we can return to our operations to ensure the safety of the event next weekend. We thank the government for their assistance and the people of Bermuda for their understanding. But it's not back to business as usual for the preparation of CLGP. CLGP has drastically pared down its operational requirements over the stay-at-home period. Measures include reduced numbers of people on site to only those that are essential to finishing the preparations of all eight boats and the on-water safety trials. Also, CLGP are revising aspects of its programming during the competition. This includes changes to its hospitality program to comply with the latest government protocols and the cancellation of the ticketed tour boat spectator experiences. This news is obviously great for all the events, but none more so than Team New Zealand. The new team involved in the Global Series were threatened the most with their boat rush to Bermuda incomplete and fears it might not be ready. Burling and Chuk and six other squad members left New Zealand on Thursday. They will be able to train in an opposition boat while theirs is finished. And that's not a problem as it would have been in the America's Cup because the boats are all identical, it's a one design class. Another top America's Cup sailor is going to be helming the British boat, so Ben Ainsley is jumping in the F50 this time round. The British team burst onto the scene with victory on their first Sail GP event in Sydney over a year ago. So, it sounds like Ainsley could be a real contender. He says, we have competed only once in Sail GP and that went well. That said, the competition will be extremely tough, perhaps the toughest ever. There's going to be eight teams competing in Bermuda in a week's time. It will be interesting to know who you think is going to win it and why. Do you think that New Zealand have enough time in the boat? Do you think that Jimmy Spittle's going to get revenge over Burling? Or do you think Ainsley's going to get an opportunity to show his class and win another Cell GP event? Personally, I think none of them could get the top prize. They face stiff competition from Australia and their helm Tom Slingsby and Nate Outridge on Team Japan. This really is a lineup of the world's best, so it would be interesting to see who comes out on top. So that's it for this week's video. If you want to keep up to date with sailing news, if you press the subscribe button and then the alerts bell, then YouTube will send you alerts each time I produce a new video. And I'm trying to do one of these per week. So with that said, I hope to see you in the next video.